you were on the Charlie Kirk show recently yeah. and you were talking about the spiritual component and how your faith has grown oh, yeah. with, first of all, you were raided by the FBI, yes. guns drawn, and all because you just stepped foot in the Capitol, right? Yeah. And then I you- I think it's more because I'm, I'm a loud mouth about- Well, that. exactly but too. Yeah. But then just recently, you were also arrested coming back from the Daily Wire's uh, two Lady years. Ballers Yep, two years premiere. later. So two that years. first night in jail, I ended up sitting there holding the Bible, reading it, that night mm. until I fell asleep, fell asleep with it in my arms. Love it. Until they came and got me the next day. Like this new world, man. You used to have to go into a studio and rent the space. <sighs> right. and now you just, no, we don't do that anymore. Hundred dollar, fifty bucks for the lights. You, get the- you know what though? I, I like it because this the house it represents yeah. pretty much exactly what you're dealing with, yeah. right? Because the federal government they're going after the traditional family, yeah. and this is what the house represents. Yeah, yeah. and they want they the want nuclear to, family. They want to break it up and make us just a bunch of uh, autonomous automatons. Yes. You know, they don't want us to... Trans automatons. Trans, uh, transhuman, right? That transhumanist is, yes. is yeah. coming really hard right now. And they want us to... It's ultimately... These are Marxist tactics, right? You have to destroy the uh, the family, uh, destroy the uh, your belief system, yeah. which will ultimately destroy the country. Yeah. So we're sitting in there right now. And the family, they always say this is the smallest form of government. Yes. So that's where it starts. But if... What's been the push? Dad's an idiot. Dad's mm-hmm. that's dumb. That's silly yeah. during like Family Guy. Family Guy. I mean, Simpsons everything. That oh, after, yeah. after about, I want to say after the six or seven. You, season, you said that when I was a kid. Yeah, I did. Yeah. No, yeah. I mean because it's, I mean it's true. It's a direct. Then they shifted into what was that, about eight years ago the whole toxic masculinity yeah. phrasing. So you have men who are supposed to be the initial protectors second guessing themselves doubting themselves doubting the thing that got put in us to stand in yeah. front the no that mm-hmm. we do so so clearly like what is that it's crazy yeah. no they they really um emasculated so many yeah. men to sit back and one of the things i always pointed out when i was got started going out in 2020 who i saw first were the women yeah i saw the women the mama bears yeah and i used to in speeches and still to this day and i'll you know say yeah. it out there is Men, well, who were the first up. people to witness Jesus' resurrection? It was the come women. On, come on, but hey, before you go on, on, guys, welcome to the Timmy Tom Show. <laughs> we have a great guest today, Siaka. Dude, I don't even know your last name. Massaqua. Massaqua. There you go. Where are you from? Um, well, my family's from Liberia, West okay. Africa. Um, I was born in Rochester, New York, so I can still be president. Uh-huh. <laughs> I have the birth there you go. Get to show. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, but I grew up, uh, I was born there, grew up in Chicago, okay. and then right outside of Chicago in Evanston, Illinois. Super, I'm, I'm even sad that the direction they're going, they're getting oh, yeah. reparations now for housing yeah. discrimination. They just voted today to stop the ceasefire in Gaza. So that's <laughs> so that, that's good to know. That, that's good to know. And they, all, they also just um, <laughs> reinstituted segregated classrooms. That's nice. So that... So they're going backwards. They're going backwards. But the way they did it, because they're always really sly, is that... They don't have it as it's a black only class and uh-huh. only black kids can take it. So they're not forcing kids to do it. But the culture has been saying you can't be around white people and white people. You shouldn't be around anyone yeah. that has a tint in there of melanin in their skin. Yeah. So now you have these kids coming up going, well, either I'll take this class or that class. And it's like, well, this class offered for the black experience. This class offered for everyone else. So you choose completely racist right so they 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 were not doing it the person's choosing to do it but everything in the world's telling that person you shouldn't hang out with anyone yeah. that melanin is different than yours yeah so what's gonna happen yeah yeah so they they're offering uh this this separation based on the enemy it i love what charlie racist. says if you care about skin color that means you're a racist yeah you care pretty much yeah yeah I, my my friend a good friend of mine we're working on uh writing projects together and he always points out, and he's not, he's, he's working his way into the Bible. He's working his way into God. Like he knows God's real. He knows Jesus real. He doesn't know what he says and what he talks, but he's working there. And one thing he always points out over and over, he goes, I dare anybody, show me verse that talks about skin. Yeah. Show me the verses that talk about this group was colored this way and this mm-hmm. group was colored that way. Show me. Where is it? It's nowhere in the Bible for yeah. a reason. Much like there's no timetable in the Bible for the you know seven days or six days with the seventh day rest. There's no timetable, but yet, why does the enemy always want to put a time? Well, six days, that's crazy. Six days, human days may be crazy, but what's six days to God, mm-hmm. right? Just just like it's, where is the skin in there? And they try those, those like uh, the black Hebrew Israelites try to go, well, the bronze in, in Revelation. Yeah. And you go, yeah. bronze, the, 
shoes were brown, swords were browns. Like, what were we talking about? Yeah. Like, it's so wild. Yeah. Where, where did those of us who are sort of in between light and dark, you know, yeah. I, I come from an Italian and French background. Right. And and I have a little bit of Hebrew in me too. Uh-huh. I found out it's, the it's less than one percent. So you're on the same level as Elizabeth Warren. Uh, yeah, Elizabeth yeah, Warren. Yeah, so. Yeah, but which, so that means you can get into any school. Yeah, and any any type of program but, you want. And I hey, could probably go to Israel and yeah. be a citizen if yeah. I want. No, but I, my question is in the, in this new separation, which is not separation, but it's identification. Yeah, uh, where do those of us who are neither totally white nor totally dark but someplace in between where do we come in well the the woke revolutionaries will say because you aren't dark at all you are inherently white you but can, you can be trans african american yeah you can oh, okay so, oh, so it's only is, with gender that that works well no so this is what it's interesting so there's a new movie coming out on uh the 8th right it's okay. called letters to american church it's uh, by eric metaxas yeah. yeah so they did a screening at godspeak yesterday Right of the movie, and within that they talk about that. They talk about so they set up the whole black and Latino and anything with darker melanin. Right, they right. set that up so somebody can a kid yeah. can jump right into that. But if you're just a like exactly what you are, right, where it's like, well, I have some of this, have some of that, but the world may see you as white based yeah. on what the culture is saying, then they bring in the sexual identity. Because uh-huh. you can't just be a boring old white guy. You may be a pan, or you may be a tran, or you may be a les, or you may be a. G- it's you because this right here, the simple nor- normal. You know what you are wrong. You are gay. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. You are gay. Yeah, that meme is so funny. <laughs> you know, so it's like they they set this up so now when kids, teenagers who are confused anyway, and they're yeah. frustrated about the acne and about their feelings towards a girl or a boy or yeah. whatever's happening, then they go, "Well, you can't be yourself because that's why you're off. Yes. You're off yeah. because you haven't identified with the thing yet." So now instead of the melanin that you yeah. like as a black person, you, ident- you you can go, oh, well, that's me. I see it. Yeah. Now they go, you don't be that because you'll be ostracized. So then you must be one of these categories. Ooh. Well, that's the thing also Choose. with your story. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're facing an indictment now for being in the yep. Capitol at January 6th yep. for 71 seconds. 71 seconds. You didn't break any windows. Nope. You didn't beat anybody. Not at all. You didn't. Hail! You didn't no. force your way you didn't in. Force no, your no, way none in. Of that. No, you I didn't go in with the you rest didn't, of the crowd. You weren't wearing a BLM <laughs> sweat, so maybe no. you should have. I was wearing a Trump hat, though. So you were wearing a Trump hat, hat which is, but we funny. always hear in the media, "Hey, everybody's against black people. Everybody's against this." But if you want to go, you know, burn down a Wendy's or loot a yeah. Target, <laughs> it's just reparations. Yeah. <laughs> but know, how come they don't take that same stance with you when you're in the Capitol? So let's go back to that statement you made. Okay. So you can be those categories until you start speaking differently than exactly. what they tell you the categories. Because the category should be yeah. speaking, right. yeah. Exactly. Okay. So there's a script for you know, talk, okay. especially we're out here in uh, LA. Let's get a little so. closer that we can get the mic. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. So so we're out here in LA, and, and you know, I've been an actor for a while. So I look at things from a, a media standpoint, and mm-hmm. so they give you a script. Yeah. And I think Corey Bush or one of the squad members made it uh, made a statement. If you're not, if you're not uh, uh, speaking black or if you're not supporting black things then we don't need to hear you yeah latino things we don't need to well, hear joe you. said it himself things. if you don't vote for me then you, you ain't, ain't black, black right and, yeah. and that that is the that's because they've been marketing black the entire yeah. time they introduced it mm-hmm. during the civil rights movement or operation as i like to call it they shifted from negro to black yes uh-huh. so then you became white the guy who's multi multi-racial yeah once they made that sh- that shift then you were no because, more yeah. those points that I'm Italian. That's a good nothing, point. Because point. her family, my grandma's family, yeah. is both Dutch and Lithuanian. And on the Dutch side, they never mixed with anybody else besides yeah. Dutch. Yeah. So when she married a Lithuanian, it was like, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> and it's the same way in every other culture. And here it is, and that's the that's the point I made a video yesterday talking about people aren't different, but cultures are. Yes. Mm-hmm. And we need to respect that. And we can respect that our culture is different than other cultures. Because other cultures, like you just had, says, yeah. No, you can't marry a Lithuanian where in America the woke revolutionaries yeah. go, they're both white people. Exactly. Right? So yeah. so the <laughs> <laughs> the place of yeah. separation is of the enemy and is consistent. It's not new. Exactly. None of this stuff is new and they're not creative. They just repackage it in something different and then call it, you know, DEI or something. Yeah. Uh, it's But it's not new and to separate us, right? They don't want a black, a black and a white person yeah. to sit down and have a conversation because no. now they can't sell us what blacks means, right? What it means to be black. Yeah. So we, we have to get into a place where I always said, and I said this earlier in the interview, 
if we don't get back to Christ, if we don't get back to God and his love for us and, and his path for us, we're going to be stumbling across these issues over and over. And the yeah. stumble, though, is not just, oh, you uh, uh, had a mistake in misidentifying someone or having a, a, an argument with someone based on uh, misunderstandings. The stumbles come into spay, into play like we saw in 2020 when people were murdering people. Yes. But it was okay because that person was a Trump supporter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Literally a man shot on his 40th birthday because yeah. of that. Uh, people getting beat up because they decide to go, no, you can't destroy my business. Yeah. Yes. Why? Because business ownership. Is you might as well take it back to the Klan days. I mean, that's exactly Cause what it, it is. It, the Klan just didn't attack black people, but they also attacked white Republicans. Yes. Because the Klan was all Democrats. Well, And the Klan, here's a beautiful thing. The Klan, yeah. to me, hey, was their sorry, first. Sorry, real quick. If you need to bounce... I can just edit it out. Okay, so, cool. yeah, just, yeah, I just want to be yeah, just that. We'll, we'll yeah. cut that out and post yeah. it. Um, you know, speaking of the Klan, the Klan to me, when I look back at it and look at who's who was running it and what are their tactics, it's no different than the brown shirts. Mm-hmm. It's no brown different. Shirts. The brown shirts oh, yeah. in, in yeah. Germany. And that's yeah. what Hitler used them to terrorize. Yeah. And the it, Red Army and the, Red and the Arm, communism. Exactly. No, difference, no different than also the Freedom Riders. Yes. The Freedom Riders were Northerners that came down to cause chaos in an area. Right. No different than Antifa, who have been bussed into multiple cities. No different than when the Klan were doing it and they were being busted yeah. and moving to places to, yeah. to, to terrorize people. So, that, again, the tactic isn't different. It was a hood in this certain time. Yeah. Then it was uh, freedom riders in this other time. Then it was anti-fascist. So, yeah. like, you can't say anything about it and BLMers. So it doesn't change. But the, the tactic no. is the same. Mm-hmm. Chaos and destruction. Well, the fist is the same. And it's, you know, Second Thessalonians says that the spirit of lawlessness is already at work. And then, you know, the one who now restrains it will continue to do so until he's taken out of the way. And then the lawless one, the Antichrist, will be revealed. Right. But that spirit is already at work. Yeah. It's the same spirit, the spirit of Babel, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Oh, it hasn't from changed. From the lie from the very beginning, do this and you'll be like God. And what Surely we're seeing in our... Surely you won't. You're not going to die. Surely. Yeah. How did, wink, wink. How, I thought her name was Eve. Her name was really Shirley. <laughs> Shirley. Shirley. <laughs> okay, got it. She was, she was like, my name's yeah. Eve. He's like, oh, I, I'll be right back. You know? but, <laughs> but that's what I think people miss is this is when you look at it through God's perspective, you see a spiritual component. Right. And it's all spiritual. Paul says our struggle is not against flesh and blood, nope. but against principalities. Six, exactly. Six, so I, I really want to get into the capital stuff because yeah, there's yeah. a whole bunch of spiritual components to that. Because... Why are they trying to demonize Trump supporters and especially those who have gone into the Capitol? Well, it's it's I think it's uh, ultimately it is the spiritual battle. So if you can sit there and you can have uh, you turn brother against brother. Yeah. Right. Um, falsely. That mm-hmm. is of the enemy. Right. So you start from there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the impetus and, and, and the motivation is evil in its intent. But then you move forward and it goes that's evil in its intent because that's what it does. But it goes. What's their What's their end game? Their end game is to separate us, and we talked about it a second ago. And that's have, the end game. That's the end game. <laughs> Do you bleed? No. Um, and you have you should have cut off the head, right? <laughs> um, and, and so what they what they started to do, at least from what I see, is that having us as this you know these automatons that don't have any personal like kind of stake in anything yeah. based uh, outside of what the state wants us to move. Now they can continue to have power and control, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Mm-hmm. That's what they're going for. So tale of the oldest time, whether it's Nebuchadnezzar or Joe Biden, they all want power. You can go tell them, hey, you know, this is what your dream meant. And you go, great. I still need people to bow down to me over here. And, and you're like, you just said that God was great. Yeah, I know, but I'm greater. Right? <laughs> and that's that's, that's that's exactly what they're, they're ultimately yeah. doing. And by keeping us separate, then we don't know God's grace because I know a lot of it, just even running for office, walking around my neighborhood in North Hollywood, 95% of the doors were conservative. Mm-hmm. But living in North Hollywood and being in Hollywood since 04, I'm like, well, it's so blue and I just keep it to myself. That's the point. Yeah. Shut up. Don't say anything. Right. Yeah. Sit back. Hide in your corner wondering why. But just like our Revolutionary War, we get the churches activated. and we, Churches are the what leaders you sh- should be and used to be the leaders of the community. So we get the churches activated. The first church, uh, the first battle in the Revolutionary War were 300 uh, Wasn't church Wasn't it goals. Samuel Adams? Uh, no, Samuel Adams no. a little later. But yeah, it, it, was, was, it was a pastor. I forget I his name. I forgot his name, too. But it was the Black Robe Regiment. Yep, exactly. So yeah. the first. Mather? By the time they got to. Maybe. But by the time they got to the fourth. So the next three groups that came out to fight and defend what you know yeah. eventually became America were three other congregations led by their pastors. By the time we got to the fourth one, it was 3,000 people. Our Christians were peaceful. Yeah. 
They are. They yeah. are peaceful. We just we just got yeah. caught up in being too nice. Well, that's that's the thing. <laughs> they, nice is and, the thing. And we spoke about this that being a Christian is not being nice, and the fact that the enemy wants to keep us separated from from others. What does Jesus say about in John thirteen? That all men will know you're my disciples yep. because you love one another, mm-hmm. and, the way yeah. you, and the way you move, right? Yeah. So, and that's we get into what love is, and we see it anytime you push back against what they're doing. They say you're being hateful, and it, and then they try to use this one guy, this, this uh, gay dude, recently he was just trying to come at me about some stuff, and I'm like, look, he's like, aren't you supposed to love, love? I'm like, well, what does God say, love? Yeah, is? yeah. And that goes back to then the Christian, because when I was getting into and when i was outside they would toss out those um those quotes well love is love well god says love your enemy love your neighbor as yourself so what are you doing but i didn't know what came before and what came after yes so as christians out there read your bibles because then you know how to defend when they try to use scripture which it said the devil will use scripture against you it's this is not like again i'm not breaking through any type of yeah. codex or anything it says the devil will use scripture against you and he knows it better than any one of us mm-hmm. yeah so if we hear the little statement like gavin newsom says love your neighbor as yourself to pass prop one that can allow you to kill babies inside the womb up to the moment of birth mm-hmm. but you read the rest of it yeah and now you can go oh it doesn't mean to just let people do yeah. whatever they want that's a way of showing love it, well first god's love is what includes truth that's yes. right. Patience, you know, love long- is kind, love is patient, does not envy, brag, boast, yep. and it also does not rejoice in unrighteousness. And that means there's way, a yep. standard. There, there is a standard. There's a standard for what love is supposed yes. to be, and love is never. It's not nice. No, and no. it's not even a fruit of the spirit. No, well, kindness is kindness is, and that's that's why we again Christians, as I'm and my wife and I now my now wife Charlotte, yeah. Um, we started reading the New Testament together when we first wow. started dating. Mm-hmm. And we started off with Romans 1. This is my suggestion usually for people when you want to know how to get into it, especially in this time. If you start with Romans 1, you can tell where they are with Christ really fast. Right, yes. because that breaks down. Everything. You go, ooh, that's me. Yes. <laughs> and it's, but it also, I remember we first read it, and it blew my mind because I was like, this is why it's true. Yeah. Yeah. How can they be talking about people today when it's written by as a lot of we hope. <laughs> That's all right. It's the well, bloopers. I got into Romans one and it just hits you with man, it's so on point to what's happening today. And yeah. I always tell people you start with Romans, then go back to Matthew. Because within Romans, it tells you so much about us today. All of it does. The whole Bible does, mm-hmm. but there's something that Romans does because it, it goes into, you know, when it starts off, I want to say it's 22 and it's like those who profess themselves as wise yeah. you know, are foolish. And then it shows, then he turns them over. And what's one of the first things? Men started to lust after each other. Women start to stop to use a natural use of motherhood mm-hmm. to go into, you know, yeah. each other and look at the culture. Just that those two first statements. Then comes the behavioral patterns of those two first statements. Those two first statements, I look around and we just, I just saw a report, 40% of Gen Z consider yeah. themselves LGBT, you know, adjacent or whatever. Yeah. And it's really not because they're trans. No. It's, it's a social contagion. Exactly. Yep. And that's, and when you start to see that and you see that in Romans and you go, where does it go to? It leads to all this. And look how to respond when you have a conversation with people like that and you just, you do have a little pushback. What happens? Name calling comes out right away. Oh, yeah. The, the backbiting comes out right away. Everything that's described there comes out there right away and, and they're okay with it because they're in their own minds morally justified to come at individuals like this. But the Bible tells us this is what they're going to do. Yeah. That's so it right. tells me then it's more true. Mm-hmm. And that has been since we started Romans to today, there have been so many different examples and we'll talk about when they arrested me recently, but everything has just, it, it, I'm, out, I'm coming to me now. It says, you will see his glory in these yes. times. And I, <laughs> you were on the Charlie Kirk show recently yeah. and you were talking about the spiritual component and how your faith has grown oh, yeah. with, first of all, you were raided by the FBI, yes. guns drawn, and all because you just stepped foot in the Capitol. Yep. Right, yep. and then I think it's more because I'm I'm a loud mouth about well exactly too. Yeah. But then just recently, you were also arrested mm-hmm. coming back from the Daily Wire's uh, two Lady years. Ballers. Yep, two years premiere. later. Two years later, mm-hmm. and so throughout this time, though, your faith has grown. Yeah, because yeah. where else are you going to go to? You know, it, it's really funny, man. Isn't your faith in Trump? 
No, God, no. God, no. <laughs> Isn't Trump your Lord and no, Savior? No, 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 no. I, I mean, he's right now. You wouldn't the person believe. Up front, I mean, but. you know, but we get so many people who are like, "Stop putting your faith in Trump." I'm like, guys, come on. You know, you know what that is though. When yeah. people are saying that, it's because they don't have God. Exactly. Of course. So if they don't have God, they put their faith in man. Exactly. So when they look at you, the perspective is, well, you must be because that's a, a spaghetti monster or whatever. Right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, so. So when they see that of you, and I've asked this, even family members, why do you think I support this? Well, I don't know, because you love... No, that's not why at all. I support it because the Bible X, Y, Z. Yeah. And so when you see how, when people respond to you like that, it's almost like we can take a moment and go, you don't understand what, why I, uh, I, you know, I, I dig what I dig. Yeah. You, you're going off of that. And, and it's no fault of their own, because that's where they are. But we can now, and I've been looking at this, how, how can we better be, in a sense, apolo- uh, be apologists? for our faith in this current climate, mm-hmm. right? Because mm-hmm. a lot of times I've seen some older videos and it moves differently than how we may need to use move now. And part of it is, we again, go read your Bible so you know your word and then you can have the word is the sword. I've watched people disappear, flail, and run by just quoting mm-hmm. the scripture, just going, well, Jesus said this. Literally have a cousin go, stop using quotes. And I'm like, you say you're a Christian and you want me to stop using the Bible to back my point up. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And that's how far the church has fallen. Mm-hmm. That those who profess Christianity will tell you to stop using these quotes. Enough with these quotes, as he said. Yep. It, well, it's really wild where we're going. What does Timothy say? You need the input. Oh, I do need the input. <laughs> you need the input. Well, it's the Timmy Tom all, show. All scripture, not, not all scripture is uh, inspired by God. Inspired by God. But also in the last days, men will. Oh, in the yes, the last days, men will be lovers of themselves yep. and not of truth. And they will not put up with sound doctrine. That's right. But they will surround themselves with pre- preachers and teachers who will their ears. tickle their ears. And that's something as human beings. Thank we you, love. Yeah, keep yeah, there you go. keep <laughs> inputting. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, well I'm know, just so fascinated. I just... yeah. Well, that's something we love is to tickle our ears. I mean, I'm I'm a big fan of fantasy, of anime, yeah. of sure. comic books. And before I got in, you know, I, I reconnected with God in the sense where God reconnected with me, and then found Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I was always into. When all did those you stories. get saved? Okay, so that that's a funny story. Uh-huh. Real fast because. Uh, I when I when I started go to recovery for my alcoholism, yeah, that got me connect reconnected with God. Gotcha, mm-hmm. right? Like the idea of God that there's something bigger that he's well, because you need something you. outside of yourself to exactly, recover, right? right? Something bigger than you're yourself, like. Right? I got myself in here. I'm not going to get myself out. <laughs> it's the same alcoholic brain that got me in here. <laughs> exactly. I go, all right, I can figure out the puzzle. I'm like, no, you can't. It's been well, it's been stop thirteen I years to. or fourteen years. Wow. Um, but then you know I what happened? So that kind of got you in the pattern and movement of where there's prayer in yeah. there there's mm-hmm. responsibility you yeah to, in the rooms you take different you know responsibilities and you do that over and over because you know you, that that shows you the importance of why you're a part of something bigger than yourself so that was the process starting uh, i got sober first in 2013 about 19 months and then i figured it out i thought i graduated so uh-huh. i went back out in the world and figured out i didn't <laughs> and it was like oh no and it was so bad it's so funny because god God slaps me in the face. I think he slaps everyone, but he God slaps me in the face. And it's still with love because I went from, after 19 months, I had a girl that I was like, this is it. I was making that <laughs> cash in my pocket. I was living in a nice nice place. I bought a car with cash. And I, wow. took, a, I took a sip of wine with her. One, and this wasn't her. This was all me because I thought this would impress her. Uh-huh. Took a sip of wine. A week and a half later, we broke up, and I was drinking a handle of vi- or whiskey every night to go to sleep. Wow. Like, that's how quickly it mm-hmm. comes back. And so this time around, though, uh, I was working for this company called uh, Moaning Presentation Group for uh, Crest uh, um, for Crest Conventions, Crest Oral-B. And the husband and wife, super Christians. Yeah. Like, they were just amazing. Talk about just the grace that they move in, wow. that people can move in. It shines so bright. And this and a and group that they brought in had the same remnants of that. So the people that I became friends with in my time I was sober, when they would say, hey, we're saying this because we love you. The things that my mom and friends would say before I got sober, I couldn't hear them before sobriety. After sobriety, even when I was drinking, I could hear it now. Yeah. And it hurt me in a way that it didn't make sense before. So then I went back in the rooms and 
I went from that space to, but the day before I went back into rooms for about a month, I was sleeping in my friend's sunroom on an air mattress that deflated every night. So I literally woke up on the floor every morning. Every morning. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's humbling. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and so, and so, sure. and so I, I, I was like, that's I the Lord go. just deflating Deflate, you. Yeah. yeah. And like, literally he's like, mm-hmm. what are you going to do? You mm-hmm. know? Um, and so I went back into the rooms and the day I walked into the rooms, I, I walk in and you, you have a lot of shame yeah. you're going through, especially coming back let yeah. alone from the first time I walked in the room and then I see the guy who was my first major acting teacher in college. Oh wow. He's sitting there. I knew he was in LA. We knew each other, but he's in that room and he's like, and his seat empty right next to him. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I'm like, and I look over and there's this girl <laughs> yeah. we met two months earlier at a friend's party. Who uh-huh. was, she was a girlfriend of the guy. And I came with alcohol. We were watching like Chicago sports all day, right? Uh-huh. And um, I had a uh, whiskey and I was like, hey, you want some whiskey? She's like, oh, no, 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 I'm sober. You know, I go program. I was like, oh, yeah, I did that, but I'm good now. Mm-hmm. And I see her. I walk in the room. I see him and I see her. She's like, hi. <laughs> I'm like, oh. You know, I'm crying. I'm like, this is okay, God. Yeah, you yeah, got yeah. me, you know. Um, and that just that that started the practice of being obedient to because I, I couldn't do it on my own yeah. anymore. But when we fast forward, things are going great. My career is going back up. I walked back in the rooms, by the oh, way, way, on March 15th, 2016. Oh, wow. And so uh, that was, you know, the year Trump was elected, voted for him then. My career got to a point where I was a working actor, where yeah. I had plays, commercials, TV shows, movies. I flew to Liberia, my family's home country, to shoot a movie there in 2017. Wow. Mm-hmm. First time I was back as an adult, but yeah. it was for a project. Literally, mm-hmm. God used my love to allow me to go back home yeah. and do my major scene in there in the the the, number, the uh, major church, which is Providence Church, that my grandfather used to be the pastor of. And that I see his is name cool. Wow. Sitting on the wall there. And I'm just like, what? Yeah. You know? Um, and, and it's so, almost like Jacob, because oh, Jacob, yeah. he sees, oh, I was with you here. I was with you yes. here. I spoke to your father. I spoke to your grandfather. Yep. Oh, you are the God of my father. Yeah. And so it starts to hit in that way. Yeah. You start going, whoa, something else is going on. So then 2020 hit and everything happened with that. And I'm getting you know more involved in the Trump rallies and, and speaking at different events now. Were you always a conservative? No, no. I okay. grew up super liberal. Wow. You know, like I said, that that town Evanston where they're doing all mm-hmm. those things. Like I was, I actually was the MC and led the march for the anti-violence march when I was a senior in high school. Oh wow! Talking about all of the we got to stop the hatred and the racism and da, 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 da. like I was I was that kid. Wow. Oh, I was I was. I don't want to say I'm Paul. I don't want to say that at all. But like in in his on one side, in the sense of the conversion. Yes, mm-hmm. yeah. it was like that. I was all in there. I yeah. was yelling at a friend about George Bush not making a statement. Isn't it funny that you started off as a leftist, became a conservative, then became a Christian? Well, I, I would or say was it Christian. I, I would say the, the Christian, Christian came, came first. Okay, I did first. vote for Trump, but like the Christianity came first. Gotcha. Because I just I, again with everything going on from. Yeah. The pandemic really started going, man, I got to continue to lean yeah. on him. I got yeah. friends who are Christian and then I got friends who are conservative and then became a Christian. Mm, and yeah. it's it's all truth is God's truth. Yes. We're mm-hmm. not talking about we're the conservative platform, yeah. right? The majority conserving the traditional family, the rights of men. Yes. yes. Like those type of values that freedom comes from God. Yes. Liberty. Right? Not government. Yes. And so those ideas, when you drink from that, you want to find the source and it's it's comes from jesus so that, and that was the thing right so with yeah. aa i'm in there and the big book's amazing i find out well you know catholics wrote it so it's like okay well the god element they actually took more reference to god out of the, from their original manuscript right yeah because they're like well you know what about the agnostic or the mm-hmm. yeah. atheist or the jew or the muslim like everyone suffers from that disease so how can we phrase it to them so then when 2020 hit and here in la there were they were they were being very uh, restrictive, just like a lot of blue cities, about how people can come in, come and go, you know, uh, vaccine, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, ID or mask or all this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I remember when I went in that room, it's because I was desperate. If there was anything that I could use as an excuse to keep me out of that room, I would have. Yeah, yeah. And when you start to do that, how many people were lost? And you know, the numbers of relapses and suicides were through the roof. In 2020, so that I saw people in that community that I was so close to it start moving away from the tenets of the program, which is ultimately the tenets of God. 
that that started telling me I need to find more truth. Yeah. Well, if this thing saved my life and it's based on it must be over here. So I started surrounding myself with more mm-hmm. Christians and talking and, and being around people like in that sense. And November of 21, after I met my wife, after the raid and all this stuff, I'm at an event downtown and I got the honor to speak. I'm driving back home from downtown. I'm taking the, the five right to up to the 134 mile yeah. on the five. As I'm driving, I'm feeling good. And my girlfriend at the time, and she's in a car that she's going to meet me back at my house. And I'm just like, yeah, man, whew, fighting a good fight. Feel good. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And what even Jesus had done. Thank you, Lord. I'm going through it. And as I'm driving, I see this tanker. And on the back of it, it says, Jesus saves. And I'm like, yeah. That was it. Wow. It just all made sense. Mm-hmm. And I drive by him. And I'm just like, <laughs> like it just did it like i couldn't tell you it wasn't a scripture i read it wasn't well you know because all the i put all the stuff yeah. together moment it just said jesus saves and it was just that was just like but it made yes. sense because you had been through this process knowing that i do need a savior yes and that's that's really that's the not cr- man <laughs> no and it's really the crux of the cosmic battle that we're seeing right now is you have people who believe that they are god yes and do not need a savior yes. that they need to save other people from the distinctions of gender, sexuality, marriage, of the the uh, the chains and slavery of Christianity yes. and everything that goes with it, well, right? I think they believe that you can save other people from ultimately other people. Exactly, that's the problem. Yes, and like we brought up Ephesians, and that's why it's it's justified if we silence political yes. prisoners, people who want to speak up with truth, or as they say, punch a Nazi. There's something I would always <laughs> it's, hear. it's okay to punch a Nazi. I'm like, yeah, I, I'm looking at this gay dude being like. Yeah. Those who think are Nazis, you're only saying that because you're in a place where you feel exactly by support. Mm-hmm. And the other side are those who understand, I am not God, mm-hmm. I am created, and I do need a savior. Yep. And yep. that's what we're seeing right now. We're starting to see. And I think that clash, and this is why I said earlier when I was uh, speaking with the coaches of biblical citizenship, is that we look around and it's Pride Month that turns has turned into Pride Year. Um, and, and then it's trans this and... You know, it's it's they they keep it's trans this Pride Month that and they keep going over and over and they're in the streets and they're on television and there's music and I stop and I go, Okay. God tells us in Joshua, just in Joshua one, four different times be bold and courageous. Four different mm-hmm. times. Right? Fear not. Fear not. Throughout the whole Joshua see? one nine. Joshua one nine is actually on a bracelet that That's that funny. couple from uh Moaning Presentation got yeah. group Scott and Kim. Every month on the 15th, my, that 15th, every month, Kim reaches out saying, keep going. Because her Love dad, it. you know, passed, unfortunately, through this disease. And in that in year five, in 2020, they sent me a bracelet that on the back said Joshua 1-9. Nice. I had no idea what it was. I was like, oh, mm-hmm. it was nice. Then I finally looked it up. I Googled it and I saw it. I'm like, whoa. Yeah. But he tells us, even Timothy, like, what are you doubting Timothy? What are you doubting me for? Stop doubting. Stop yeah. worrying. I've not God's given you a spirit you. of fear or timidity, but Come a on. power, love, and a sound mind. So why aren't we, as Christians, being more bold? Why aren't we being louder about our faith? Why aren't we? And, and I'm not saying that what I've seen or seen you see in this clash now is because we're starting to do more of exactly. that. You're Sean Foyt's, you know, your Rob McCoy, yeah. your, your, uh, your Jack Kidd, your Jack Charlie Kibbs. Kirk. Exactly. And all that stuff. But there are more starting to get it. Yes. Mm -hmm. And there's more Christians. And and I go, okay, we don't need to move nastily like them, but they're moving boldly. Yes. Why don't we? We have the God of everything, the creator of everything. They have a God of today. They have a God of Fauci. They have a God God of LGBT, which started all that stuff was in the last 10, 15 years. Yeah. Yeah. We have a God that created it, all of it. Yes. But yet we're afraid to speak. Yeah. That's that's something we have to contend with. Yeah. Before we go out there to go stop that bad thing, are you ready to go? And then why aren't you? Because you're supposed to contend for the faith mm-hmm. in the public square. Right. You're not supposed to sit back and just read your Bible and go, okay, I did it good today. Great. No. It's a very small God. Mm-hmm. So why don't Christians? I'm gonna I'm gonna tag you in. Oh, uh, thank why, you. <laughs> why don't Christians stand up for the truth? Uh, fear. What are they afraid of? We, we, we have been taught by our society, and, and we have some natural fear to begin with. Yes, yeah, humans, yeah. But society has taught us that if we say certain things, like you said earlier, we're going to be ostracized. We're going to be put down. We're going to be unliked. We're going to be right? unpopular. We're not going to be able to get a job doing X, Y, or Z because 
we don't, haven't been vaccinated enough, yeah. and so on. So fear is what restricts us. Mm-hmm. Uh, and God, as you said— Romans 13 also. People, I, a lot of Christians use Romans 13. What, what, which, what part of Romans 13? Well, we're supposed to obey authority. Oh, well. And so, Siaka, you were in sin because you weren't obeying authority. But they got to keep reading. Ah, they got to keep reading because— Unless the, it's— Yes, the authority of God. If, if it's, not, know, if it's not something that God has put into it, mm-hmm. we shouldn't do it. I, I don't think our fear is reasonable, no. but I think that it's, I think it's actually what's happened to a lot of people. You're talking about Christians. I know a lot of Christians who do exactly what you're saying. Oh, no, uh, we only want to talk about God. We don't want to talk about politics. Mm-hmm. Politics is dirty. We yeah. don't want to do anything about that. And the simple fact is what you've said. Know the word. You got to know something about the word. You got to spend time in the word. Yes. If you know the word, then you say, "What are the things that God loves yeah. and wants, and what yes. are the things that God dislikes and hates?" Yes. Mm-hmm. And then you say, "Okay, what in my life falls into that category yeah. of what God loves? Those are the things I want to build on." And I also got to be honest enough to say, "Wait a minute, God says, uh uh-uh. yeah. I hate that, I yeah. Tom. Yeah, stop yeah. that." Yeah, and that's the part that um. For the most part, there have been uh, it, it was there have been things that have been so clear. You can go, all right, I got you, God. I'm gonna get rid of it. And then there are the little, smaller, comfortable things you're used to doing, whether it's sitting on your phone playing games, you know, all night before you fall asleep. And you're right. Like, those those are the few things that distract you from the Lord. Mm-hmm. And it, it's a very that, that's the other side I want to point out. You know, because people always think Christians are just Christianity is so judgmental and it's the chains that keep you from living freely. No. What it does, it, it shines a light on the weaknesses, you yes. know, and the glory. But the weaknesses are there, and you yeah. have to. And what you can do, the great thing about it is that if you're weak into, I don't know, alcohol for say, or nicotine, or, or uh, uh, spending money unwisely, yeah, you don't have to fix it. No, you don't have to be the one to make sure you get it right. What you need to do is be the one to give it to God. Yes, and and really obey. Put the fear. Of, you know, put the fear in God where you're like, or the fear for God. Right. So you're going, okay, I may not fear man, yeah. but I fear him enough to go, if I'm hearing this stuff, this is something I always hear. Yeah. God always speaks through people and through events. So if people are saying over and over that they were before I stopped drinking, oh, you know that drinking, oh, you know that drinking, oh, you know that drinking, hey, drinking, hey, we're going to kick you out of the house and become home drunk again. And I'm like, wait a second. Maybe I need to stop this drinking. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, and yeah. that's and we want to get there. If we if we're looking at the world through a biblical world view, uh, lens, we have a better chance of hearing what God has for us and seeing His glory. Exactly, we see His beauty everywhere we look. And it's it's when you look at it through a biblical lens, which is the right, correct, yes. truthful way to look at yes. things. You fear Him and yes. disappointing Him more than you do man. Mm-hmm. And it's not because oh, God's not going to bless me, but mm-hmm. when you understand. God's love for us, yep. said, Lord. I don't want to break any. I don't want to break this relationship. Like I'm not doing something wrong because I'm going to be punished. Right. I don't want to do something wrong because it's going to break the relationship I, I have you. with you. And it's not that like, I lose my salvation, but that fellowship is broken. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you, you know, feel like you, it feels like it's kind of like um, if anyone knows, you know, when you and like one of your best friends, you get into an argument. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then there's times where you're like, well, I can't talk to him for a while. Or yeah. Him, right. And, yeah. And then you go, I got friends who don't talk to me anymore because, you know, but of all the stuff you're saying, which is crazy, which is different. Yeah. But it's like once you start and the longer you take to get back to going, hey, man, my bad. Just that alone. Hey, mm-hmm. hey, hey, dude, you're good. How you doing? You're good. You're my bad. But the longer it takes and all of a sudden becomes, well, he should call me. Well, screw that guy. Well, I thought <laughs> all the stuff we went through, and then, then, then you start building this thing, and now it becomes six months to a year that you guys haven't talked because you, your pride, your ego stopped yeah. you from just going humbly going back. And that's what he wants from us every time we stumble yeah. mm-hmm. is to humbly go back. It's not to say, you know, hey, I'm great and I messed up. God, no, it's God. My bad. I'm sorry. Help me. Help me. Yes. Right? The short is the shortest prayer is Jesus, help me, or God, help me. Um, and, and so if we get into a place where we can realize, look, the shame, yes, it's the shame it holds us back, but God just wants us to be humble. Yes. He doesn't want us to be weak. He doesn't want us to be less than. He wants us to be humble. It's Jordan Peterson thing. talks about being humble and meek. Yeah. He, he, you know, Jesus says, blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth. And he laid out one of the best definitions I ever heard. It was meekness is not weakness. No. 
the word meek is it can be compared to someone who has a sword Mm -hmm. and can wield it but chooses to keep it sheathed. yes yes it's it's strength under control control yeah and that's again that's something i didn't know meek sounds like weak so i was like i don't want to be meek that's stupid that's right you know i'll be strong i'm a man right yeah and uh, And that's something that you've had to exude yeah especially in this time yeah because for so for example yeah. go back to you know when they they raided the house and and they came in guns blazing yeah right? the guns drawn actually guns drawn not blazing I don't it's, it's funny to. they don't believe in guns but yeah but yeah they'll come do it whole arm security they'll raid your home ars mm-hmm. right they had ars and they came in and i had my godsons uh three and six there with my best friend who's staying with us at the house for a while and two other roommates and they literally come in and, and one of the reasons too I, i'm so public about how i move is because i knew they were moving on people that yeah way. Mm-hmm. i knew they also know that they tell a story about right. people in a certain way i go no 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 i want everyone to see exactly me. you're gonna see who i am before they start kind of trying uh-huh. to put something on top yeah. of it and they came in hard and the whole time, I, I just remember there was, as it was frustrating, I, there was a sense of peace behind me. Because again, this is before I was in the Word and any of this stuff, but I'd, I've always felt there was some sense of peace that was going to yeah. have me. And the only time I would never really be connected to that was when I was drunk and didn't really know what was going on for myself. Then we fast forward to when they came and got me uh, on the tarmac and we're coming back from the Daily Wire premiere uh, of Lady Ballers in Tennessee. And Two years later, on November 30th, before right as I stepped foot on the tarmac off the airplane, my wife and my our friend Amber Coyle is uh she's further they're further up and they just boom get in front of me. See, okay, FBI, can you come with us? Two guys, boom, either side. Hey, uh, you know you're coming with us to your can you know why you're being arrested? I'm like for what? It's like you know why? I'm like no, tell me why are you arresting yeah. me? Well, the other guy angry and kind of shaking as he grabs me and I'm sitting there just chill like. What do they think that you did? (laughs) What do they think I'm going to do? There's four agents there and then four airport police all strapped. I'm getting off a plane with like sweatpants and a, a, you know, a a sweat sweatshirt and a a bag. You're you're coming up like you're coming to get El Chapo. That's right. And that was the moment where I'm sitting there watching them. And I'm like, dude, I'm not going to do anything, but I'm pissed and I can be angry. It's okay. You know, it's okay to be mad. Like, but it doesn't mean I'm going to do something. Uh And so it goes back to the idea of Meek. Like if I was someone else, I'd be like, "Ah, let's go, you Mm -hmm. know, whatever. I'm like, look, come on. Yeah. See the situation. I know ultimately is not Yes, there's four of you and the other four, but it isn't you. Mm-hmm. It's something so much more sinister than what you're oh, yeah. just doing right here because yeah. you're just trying to get a bonus. You know, it's something bigger. It's, yeah. it's the principalities, right? It's the rulers of this dark age. It's mm-hmm. why we you're need to. You're blessed when you suffer for doing that, which oh. is right. I mean, even that. There's, there's an integrity, there's a strength, a peace that comes with that it, part. It's really crazy because, you know, they say God, God's foolishness confines the wisdom of the yeah. wise, right? And. As I look back in that whole moment and I'm talking to him, I'm like, you guys didn't have to do like this. And I'm, you know, I'm giving them the riot act as much as I can, it, it, you know, cuffed in the car. I'm like, nah, this is, I go, you know what? I know why you're doing this. Just like you rated me. You have, you have a headline you post up to scare people, but I'm going to keep talking. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't matter. I'm going to keep talking. And just yeah. like I told that agent that came in my house and I'm, I told those guys in the back, in the back seat of the car, I go, I'm not a rich person, but I will fight to the death for my name. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you guys are trying to go do that. I will fight to the death to make mm-hmm. sure my name is not sullied by your stories. Yeah. So we got we got back to the prison or to the jail. We got to the jail. Sorry, not back, but we're in there. And so I started talking about God and how he's, you know, Jesus saved my life. And there's two agents there with me, a woman and a man. And I go, are you guys religious? And the woman's like, oh, not really. And the guy's like, oh, I'm Catholic. Mm-hmm. I go, oh, I go, so are you <laughs> Joe like, Biden Catholic? Yeah, no, or, I mean, or, <laughs> I, well, I, that's what I said. I go, I go, so are you, are you uh, like most Catholic, Catholics or have you read the Bible? Ooh. And he goes, Ooh. he goes, oh, come on, man. I'm like, well, have you read the Bible? He goes, no. I'm like, well, there come you on, go. man. That's a Bidenism. <laughs> yeah, that's a, yeah, it's Biden. I, yeah. He was so, he was already, well, he works for the FBI. And so I, I kind of would jokingly challenge yeah. him in that way to do that. That night, after I had to change out and put me in an orange jumpsuit, and I'm only one in the night at that jail, you know, I do a little workout, and then I uh, I started to read, uh, or no, then I started doing the Lord's Prayer. Mm-hmm. I'm like, well, what else am I gonna do? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The jailer closed the door that led into the jail because I was being so loud about it. But then she comes back later and she's like, "Hey, do you want anything to read?" I'm like, "Well, you know, the Bible, if you got it." She's like, "Oh, I don't think we have it, but I'll look." 
She goes, she comes back, she's here. Hey everyone, just wanna break in the episode real quick to tell you about an exciting organization that I'm a part of. I'm actually a part of a nonprofit called Restoring Faith. I've known this family for many years and I trust their organization. What's great is they actually work with the Lord by giving aid to the Iraqi persecuted Christians who fled from ISIS in 2014. They have boots on the ground, they give supplies, they give the gospel, thoroughly vetted the organization, fully support them 100%. But Paul tells us to be with those as though we were in prison with them, to remember as them as if we were in prison with them. I'll post the website. Enjoy the rest of the show with Siaka. First night in jail, I ended up sitting there holding the Bible, reading it, then mm-hmm. until I fell asleep, fell asleep with it in my arms. Love it. Until they came and got me the next day. So the next day, we, they came and got me. I put my sweatpants back on. I have the, the sweatshirt from uh, uh, Barnabas that has a, a cross on the back that says, Jesus saves, mm-hmm. that my wife got. Yeah. I was like, oh, great. And at this point, I had never put it together to the tanker. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Until I think maybe like a month ago. I was like, oh, wait a second. That's the same. It's so funny how things will be right in front of you. You don't yeah. put right. it until later. And so we go and they take me to the they take me to the marshal's office. And we're waiting to get in there. And the two agents. And I'm just sitting there cuffed still. And I'm laughing. I go, <laughs> I go. I hope you guys stay on, on this side. Because to be on the other side and get persecuted for the way you think, it sucks. Mm-hmm. And you guys know it sucks. So I hope you stay on this on this winning side. Just stay on that for right yeah. now. So we go in and... You know what I say to people like that? Huh. I say, do you like barbecue? <laughs> Why? Yes. Because the end this result for your life is going to be a barbecue. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's a sad truth, man. That's a sad truth. That's something that actually has had me talking to my mom more about God than before because mm-hmm. she was she's completely anti-god yeah but yet i'm like no you're gonna hear how he's working in my life and yeah. i hope and i pray for her that this softens her what does your too. family think about all this well my mom has my back yeah she's mom's um my brother does my cousin a couple cousins do but overall uh liberian families are a little different than american families in the sense that they ultimately will still have your back in the sense we still love you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they'll be like, all right, we'll just kind of step back a little bit, right? But we, gotcha. when we get together, there's still nothing but love in that sense. One cousin and I, we go back and forth hard about it. And um, I used to go back and forth with my mom about it. Now she's stopped listening to the news for the last year and a half. And so she's sending me Joe Rogan clips now. I'm like, <laughs> wow. I'm like, mom, what's going on? She's like, oh, yeah, I don't know. Does this make sense? So I'm like, one yeah, step it does. Away. <laughs> <laughs> like, it does, right? Um, but you know, so so I'm, I'm in the the marshal's office or marshal's station. They put me in a cell for, by myself, and I pray as soon as I get in there. Yeah. Uh, then I go in. Uh, this is in like eight a.m. Then I go into where you can meet with your lawyer, the little box room they yeah. have with the with the bulletproof glass. But my lawyer was coming from Florida, and oh, wow. all he knew was to be there by the two or one o'clock start. So this was like ten thirty. I'm like, well, he doesn't know. I didn't what know state were you in at this time? This was right here in uh, L.A. Okay. Yeah, so now this is at downtown L.A. <laughs> and they had the clerk come on from the, the court clerk to just kind of ask him some questions to see, if, you know, what type of bail they could make. Yeah. They had the public defender come on on screens. These are screens behind it because no one walks in anymore. Yeah. The public defender comes like, oh, no, no, I'm wrapped. He goes, oh, okay, well, if you need us, we'll be there. So I'm just kind of sitting there hanging out, tired because you don't really sleep. I knock on the door. The guy, the guard comes to the window. I go, yeah, I'm done. He goes, all right, give us a minute. We're busy. Like, okay. I'm just tired. I'm like, I'm trying to sleep. The next thing you know, busting through the door is my lawyer with his with his carry on. He's like, hey, what's going on? He's like, Siaka, we made it. Red eye. We're going to get you out of here. Don't worry about it. I got to show a L.A. lawyer, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, I'm looking around kind of thinking, Larry. And I'm touching the, the wall because it's like, you know, your hands are right here. And, you know, and they have you. So people know they have you. We got you a spoon. We got you a spoon. You can get it. Start now. Okay. Um, and they have me cuffed from my wrist to my waist and yeah. down to my ankles. So I'm shuffling, every, you know, to move around all this whole time. Wow. Larry leaves and I fall to my knees and I put my hands up and I start singing that gratitude song by, uh, uh, by Brandon Lake. In line, so I throw up my hands and I praise you again and again because all I have is a hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I, I mean, that's that's all I could do. And I sang that those verses a few times, then well, you know, to put me back in. But as we're trying, we're going to go transfer. And I personally love this story because it just just his, his the what he where he puts us is so yeah. fascinating. There was this six uh, two white guy. He's like tatted up, thick dude. Yeah, neck down. 
I say he literally looked like who you would cast for like we're looking for the white supremacist in the jail movie. Mm-hmm. There he is. Right? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and so the neo Nazi or whatever. And so he had the look, that little underbite, look tough, all that. And right. And I'm just like the whole time, I'm just like you know, just stay calm in my own space. Let the Lord take care of it. So we start transferring us over. We walk to the elevator, and I'm in the front. He's standing behind me, and there's three other guys. Yeah. And he goes, "Hey, man, nice shirt." Says Jesus. Saved yeah. Me. I go, nice. I, oh, yeah. Well, you know, Jesus saved my life. And I start telling him everything about yeah, my yeah, you know, yeah. story and everything and sobriety and all yeah. this. And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, I started reading the Bible too. Da, 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 da. So we start going talking about the Bible. We get into the van or we're in the elevator talking about it. We get in the van and a uh, third guy starts chiming in. He's like, oh, I know the Lord. And we start talking about God. The two other guys were a little more silent. Then we start talking about novels and what we read and, and like Count of Monte Cristo is a great book yeah. and the Lord of the Rings trilogy and C.S. Lewis and all this and we're going back and forth that's funny we go we go into the courthouse now and when you go to the courthouse they walk you through the courthouse to go to the back when you go in the back there's the cells there where you sit in so when people go in the back they're not just hanging out on some benches they're mm-hmm. in a right. cell as we come to walk through I know my wife and my lawyer is going to be there so I was going to you know, look for them and say what's up so I'm walking in for my bond hearing and we're shuffling in and I'm the last one to come in the way we were ordered and I look over, I don't even see my wife because I, there were 15 people that came from Godspeak and around to oh, come wow. support on a Friday That's evening. That's awesome. <laughs> Man, it, it, every time I think about this, tell, like it does get me emotional. That's mm-hmm. what Paul says. Remember those who are in prison as mm-hmm. those who were there with them. Yes. Yes. And, and, and you, you see it. I saw yeah. it. I look over. I don't even see my wife because I'm like, and everyone just smiled. Just, we got you. I'm like, oh my goodness. I'm walking in thinking, wow. I, wow. I That's the church. Like, whoa, what's that going on? That is the church. So we're in there in the back and we're talking some more. And, and the guy actually asked me, he goes, what do you do you know, to get more involved? Yeah. I'm like, well, you know, you go to a county clerk's office, you pull papers, now you can run for office. So I'm telling this guy <laughs> how to run for office. So we're chatting some more. And, and, and then he goes, before we even get called in, he kind of taps me. He goes, hey, man, can you pray for us? I was like, okay. So I ended up praying for everyone there wow. in, in the jail. And one of the lines that I remember is, you know, regardless on if we're released today or we're still held, we know that Jesus has us and he will take care of us no matter what. Right. So then out of the five of us, every, the one guys, they start going and coming back. Every time they come back, the magistrate was a woman. They're like, oh, she's such a bee. She's terrible. She's unreasonable. She's a bee. Blah, blah. They keep coming back. Boom. Like that. Yeah. Right. And I'm just kind of like, all right, well, you know, I'm thinking they want to lock me up. So odds are uh, it's if I get out, that's a plus. Yeah, if yeah. I don't, this is what they mm-hmm. want. So as I'm going out, all everyone in there is like, hey, man, good luck, man. We wish you get out. Good luck. Which they weren't saying before. It wasn't like they were against it, but they weren't like. Yeah. championing it right so i was like oh thanks guys so I, I go out and i'm shuffling to go out as i open the door as soon as i turn the corner to go to where my lawyer is everyone there who's there to come and everyone there was to come support me all stand up boom and i'm like whoa my pastor pastor jesse bailey's there who like married charlotte mm-hmm. and i took us through our uh our, our, our marriage course he's there and he buttons up like let's go and i'm like I was shuffling over thinking, well, okay, keep it together. You know, and my wife's wearing, she had all black dress. She has a cross on that she got from her godmother with my ring on it. Uh-huh. And holding the Bible, her Bible that, you know, mm. we both have our Bibles to read through. And she's, uh-huh. and comes around the bench to stand there. We give each other quick kisses around. She's, boom. Like I'm st- and I'm just, and I could, see, I'm looking around me and people are still standing for a while as it just comes in there and they're talking. I'm, uh, man, to feel, it felt like hands holding me. Mm-hmm. Right on the behind, it was amazing, and um, so they did the the whole went through the whole process. The judge is like, "Okay, you're gonna be released on your own reco- or re- released with a signature bond." You know, it was I think a thousand dollars. So I leave. Now this is how God continues to work. I thought I'm good. Hey, I'm gonna get home, I'm going home fine. Now I'll find out that and I found this out later through Charlotte was that I was supposed to sign paperwork to say, "Okay, I'm going out," and the DA was supposed to sign as well. The DA also left. So oh, at this wow. point, no one's signatures on this paper that was supposed to get me out. If they don't get the signatures, I'm in there until Tuesday because there's a holiday that Monday. So what happened was one of the women, Tish, who works security at Godspeak, who actually named her little sports car after me. She goes, I'll get him. Takes off in the, in the building to go find his DA. Finds him in the parking lot. On the, he's on the phone about to leave. She's like, we need you. Brings him back. The clerk was like, look, I got to catch my train. I got to leave in 10 minutes. They're like, we'll give you a ride. Just give us a second. We can't let him stay in there. 
they allowed my lawyer to sign for me and then the DA came back signed. And that's ultimately what finished the job to get wow. me out. Wow. The Lord was still working. Even yes. I thought, yes. I was like, we did it. I'm done. Thank you, Jesus. I'm out, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and so when we go back, we have to drive back to the share, uh, the Marshall's uh, building. They let me out. And so I'm walking, go down the elevator, and I come out to the, uh, you know, to the lobby. And it's at this point, it's like 6 in the evening on the Friday downtown courthouse. That means it's dead. No one's there. And my wife's there with my lawyer. I go up to her, give her love, give him, you know, give him some love as well. We go outside and the people who came, it was, it's like out of a movie, man. People came from this side. A car pulls up yeah. where people were coming to take us. Then other people came from here. Yeah. We did this big circle. We hugged and we prayed right there. Wow. Um, and then I went home. And this whole entire time, God was with me and Charlotte. Charlotte wasn't alone the entire wow. time yes. this happened. People stayed with her that night. See, like it, it just, uh, man, it, it was. That's why you need the body of Christ. Yes, mm-hmm. and that's what we talked about at the beginning, that the enemy wants to take people away. Yes, and when you look at race or color or Sex. these different yeah. distinctions, divisions. D- divisions. Yes, it doesn't work. That's not what God intended. Nope. And that's why the, America is so beautiful yep. because He says all men are created equal because yep. god cares more about your heart and your soul yes. than anything else yes and that's what jesus says all men will know you are my disciples by your love for one another what, what kind of testimony do you think oh. all the guards and the prisoners and everybody else saw when they saw the church mm-hmm. supporting sure. you and, and 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 all that well i never i didn't even think about it like that but that was the difference between the that, raid. That's a show of God's yeah. love. Right. And, and the Lord uses those things. Think yeah. about people that you know, or maybe even in your own life, where looking back on it, you yes. can say, oh gosh, God orchestrated this to happen. Right. And at the time, I didn't think about it was God Why? doing something. Mm-hmm. But now I see how that fit in with this later time in my yes. life. And God did this. And now he's brought me to this place over here. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, 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 like all the time. It's it's so fascinating. That's what... Because when I first got when I got my first DUI in college, uh, I know, <laughs> right? sorry, <laughs> no, I mean, this connects. It's like, one of many, one of many, you yes. know. And uh, when I got that, the newspapers went nuts. Uh, the evening news reported on it as if I was a criminal. No way. Oh yeah, um, this is at University of Iowa. Oh wow, and um, Iowa City, Iowa City. Yeah, yeah. Um, you grew up in Des Moines. Oh, you grew up in Des Moines. Nice. And Cedar Rapids. Yeah. And Cedar Rapids. CR. Yeah, and I love Mount CR. Pleasant. And Mount Pleasant is good. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so they were coming at me hard uh, again. Like I said, call me criminal. Even then, uh, uh, newspapers back in my hometown wow. were reporting on it. And I remember thinking at the time, "This is it. Life's over." Fast forward after the raid, and I called what L.A. Times were going to do. I called it like a day before they put out their article. And at this point, I, and I, my mom was like, "Yeah, I'm not answering anything. I know they come in." So. That thing that happened when I was 20, fast forward almost 20 years later, and it had prepared me for the media mm-hmm. yeah, crap. But at the time, I was like, it's over. God uses it's over. all things all for the good things. of those who love Oh, it. it was so crazy that that happened like that. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh, that's why I yeah. went through it at 20 when it was, yeah, it would seem huge to me, but it was really just the Midwest and yeah. two cities. Yeah. Now this thing is international, you know, yeah. the Daily Mail was, or yeah, Daily Mail was reporting on it. Yeah. But you said something that was great, and that was the difference between the raid and my arrest. You're saying the body of Christ. Before the raid, I wasn't connected to the body of Christ. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like God was real, getting closer to Jesus, but I wasn't connected to the body of Christ. After the raid, after I met Charlotte, actually, after I met Charlotte, we started moving through together, we started going to church consistently, we started reading the Bible consistently. I was building, in a sense, the connection to the body of Christ. Yes. So when I got arrested, it was, I mean, it was night and day in the yeah. response from the raid to this. You know what it reminds me of? Mm. It shows the importance of prayer. Yes. And also the church seeking God and petitioning him. Yeah. Because God can just snap his fingers and have something done. Yeah. But he, he says, pray to me. Mm-hmm. Pray to me. Why, why does Jesus say this is the Lord's prayer? It's not for the God to pray. It's, <laughs> it's for us to pray. Yeah. And when in the book of Acts, James was arrested. Yeah. And then was taken up to the Temple Mount, was thrown down, and then beheaded. There's no record of the church praying. Peter is then arrested. Mm-hmm. And what does the church do? Pray. They pray. So much where Peter's released, goes to the door, and then the slave girl's <laughs> like, 
Yeah, this is a ghost. Yeah. Right? It's Actually, what you said was, sorry, I can't answer the door. We're praying for Peter. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. We're, we're busy, man. He's like, and oh, then, okay, I'll just leave this. Yeah, yeah. Right. but that's how God moves. Yes. And it's it, it shows, hey, the things that God is doing in your life, the peace that you have, the way that we're seeing, like when we, we look at what's happening, we can see God's power. Yeah. Oh, and you see, see God's him. truth. Mm -hmm. We see him moving everywhere. In there. Exactly. That, that's that's the thing that got me, and I was saying earlier today, was that's the example we need to take. Yeah. When mm -hmm. one of us gets uh, attacked or gets uh, you know, the weight of the world on top of him, when I got out the next day, uh, two friends, you know Brandon and Trish, right? Uh, they do with Turning Point Faith. You, I, think I probably do, yeah. They have the little kids with them. So they, they run BP uh, Media Group, and okay. they, they did my website, but they also uh, put together our Gibson Go, right? So yeah. that was ready to go right away. And I'm yeah. like, oh, wow. That night, Amber called uh, Dallas Sonia, the producer of all of Daily Wire's movies, who, you know, were friends. Yeah. And he then contacted Jeremy. Wow. So by the next day, by the time I got out, there are tweets from Jeremy Bourne. Yeah. And I know it blew up. Oh, it, it was like, I saw that happen and I'm just like, what's going on? Yeah. Then the Post Millennial wrote an article right away. Bah! Then you mm -hmm. had uh, Daily Wire. Boom. Yep. Then you had Epoch Times. Boom. Yep. Everything yep. was Red State. Boom. And I'm just like. I'm looking around. The first 24 to 48 hours I was out, it was just like what he tells ex, the children of Israel. You just need to be silent. I'll fight for you. I will fight That's for right. you. And I, I, I mean, to watch how everyone, again, compared to the raid where I felt like it was me and my buddy and we're trying yeah. to get the word out. Right. Hey, look what they're doing. This one, it was like the body goes, look what they're doing. And that, yeah, the exactly. body has strength. Yeah. Two days later, when the LA Times picked it up and, and uh, Newsweek decided to pick it up, guess what sources they pulled from? Hmm. <laughs> Exactly. Mm -hmm. And the Newsweek and LA Times both had to say my statement, which was like, we know we're going through crazy times, but with God's yeah. uh, God's love, we will get through this. So yeah. they had to put God in there. Wow. Yeah. So now, but, but look what happens when we move first. Exactly. We can't wait for them to move and then respond. We need to move first. We see the injustice, boom, we're right there to sit there and mm -hmm. we, we surround the individual or the situation. Yeah. And we scream about it from the mountaintops, not let them do it. I saw it work for me. Yeah. yeah, and I saw that to go back to getting out of jail. I saw when Paul just, it keeps ringing in my head when Paul talks about he was worshiping and praying, and the walls came down in jail. And you know, you kind of sometimes you the read shackles these, came off. The shackles came off. Paul mm -hmm. and Silas when they were singing, right? And, yeah. uh, and I think to myself, you read those, and sometimes you can take it to a sense of like, oh, that's not how is that possible for it mm -hmm. to come down? Then I start to think the same thing happened to me. Same exact thing happened to me. I was resigned to be locked up until... Who knows when. Exactly. I was because like, here we go. there are January 6th prisoners who were arrested a week after yep. January 6th, and they're still in prison. Still, without... Without a trial. Process. Yep. So I, that's what I was prepared for. And next, you know, by the next night, I'm in the arms of my wife. What else is there? Mm, what wow. else is it? Right? I even know an mm -hmm. actor who was picked up about a, a six months to a year ago. Yeah. And he still hasn't been back since. Wow. And he, you know, he's been on multiple shows. It's a crime. It, it's it's such a it's such a crime of what's going on. But again, evil is gonna evil. And the world in general, they say the you know, people we, we come out disobedient, we we want to turn away from God, and we see this world of of the ego taking uh, front and center, right? I think mm -hmm. that to me, the big push for psychology kind of was a huge push. Psychology and sex ed is a huge part of that. Yeah. So you see this ego start to push through so much so that people are so afraid of getting be called a, of a certain word or name mm -hmm. or canceled that they will let the evil permeate and grow. Mm -hmm. But now we're hitting this point where I don't have to care what evil is going to do in the long run. I really don't care if they end up having, you know, the gender 2030 goes through. Because you know the end have, of the book. Exactly. Exactly. And when you start to know Christians, read your Bible. When you start, or non-Christians, read the Bible. When you start to know and, and know that. Yeah. Because you've read it yourself. It helps to, to, to stave off the panic. Exactly. Yes. Right? Because you can go back in and go, well, he did say this. Well, he did say that. Well, he said people would be like, this. well, he did say at the end, this is what yeah. it's going to look like. So whatever chaos I may see for a moment, yeah, I don't and it's temporary. Way. Exactly, that's right. So we got to wrap up here. Oh man! But before I do, I, I do want to ask the the it, there's this theme since we started about division between people, the love of the church, no matter what, right? 
our podcast, we're the only generational podcast that talks about faith and politics. Mm-hmm. And what we want to do is twofold. We want to uh, help the churches and, and Christians understand that, hey, there's no difference between the political arena Not at all. and your daily life. Right. It's all the same under God, right. right? God's not this little God in the box who fits in your nice little thing and then and then goes away when it's time to vote. Yeah, shows up on Easter. And exactly. <laughs> and then the second one is, so if we can help people drink from the streams of truth and then they find its source, that's how we find Jesus, yep. right? So we want to lead people to Christ. What do you say to Christians who say, I just I can't get involved in politics because it's political, it's messy, or you know I'm a Christian but I vote Democrat, yeah. you know when the ballot comes. Well, okay, so I would say there's two answers to that. For the ones who say it's too political, what I say is um, there's a law now in our land. There's a couple laws that remove parents' rights from kids that when they get we just to age saw 12. that in Montana and also right. in California. In California, here it I'll just say. happened. And too. I'm talking about California right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So age 12, like you don't, you you need to get your kids permission for Maybe the medical six, workers. Five, six, something like this, something yeah. like that. Um, prop one, where you can murder uh, babies all the way up to the day of birth. Though, 28 days after birth. And 28 days was a uh, uh, prop AB 2023, and that one yeah. was like. If a baby dies 28 days after, there can't be no any questions. investigation unless it, or you have to put up $10,000 bond just to investigate the yeah. death of an innocent. So when they people say that, well, you know, that's politics over here and I'm a Christian over here. How do you live in a world that you've allowed this to exist? Yeah. Like especially you if you know what God's point of view is on these things. Yes, especially that you should know. The Egyptian God. midwives. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exactly. They lied to Pharaoh. And God blessed them. Yep. Because Oh wait a minute now. They weren't they weren't subservient to the government. That's what it says. That's what yeah. it says. But no, you Romans going. thirteen people need Keep to go going. back and read your Bible. Keep yeah. going. It's unjust. Yeah. <laughs> and so for the ones that think, well, I can't touch it, it goes then you're not then you don't know what God has said about this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because we can't sit back and allow our world to, to fall around us going, Well, exactly. Jesus got me. No, you're supposed to go out and he says, biblically illiterate. Spread the gospel. Yeah. How are you not spreading the, how can you spread the gospel if you stop at this line here? Exactly. Yeah. How can you spread his good news, yeah. the good news, if you stop right here because it's too dirty? Right. Um, the other ones who vote, uh, they're Democrats, and they, they're Christians that vote Democratic. Um, you, then you have to ask them, again, it's all go back to get into the word. What did God say about these choices you're making? What did God say about the little ones? Yeah. Just mm-hmm. that alone. What did God say about the little ones? Mm-hmm. And if you're okay with that, then you have to reevaluate um, who you claim to follow. But... We shouldn't just vote on one issue. But you they say that exact same thing. Yeah. But if you were voting, if you were going to take that same argument and use it for slavery, yeah. oh no, we're going to vote on that one that. issue. <laughs> that's slavery. Yeah. And that's why I want to, and, and I want to say that too. It's like one of the things we have to get to is understanding their masking of words. Yeah. Right? They call mm-hmm. murder of ba- innocent babies abortion. Yeah. We've got to stop using Lucifer's language. Yes. Uh, it's not abortion, it's murder. Mm-hmm. Right? Or you can call it child assassination, and well, I don't care. But it's not abortion. Yeah. It's not a nice word. Like they it. hire a hitman they to hire... murder your child. Exactly. And so once you start to see these things where they're using the their wordsmith in order to kind of trap you in as it's not human trafficking. It's yeah. slavery. <laughs> yeah. It's slavery. It's sex slavery. It's human slavery. It's what's been going on for human hi- throughout human history. Open it's the borders. it's the transatlantic slave trade to say is the worst ever. What we're seeing with these open borders and what people are putting when they put their name by a D right now and they or put their mark by a D, they're supporting slavery because mm-hmm. human trafficking sounds still sounds cute. Yeah, oh, it's I know. slavery. Yeah, yeah. It's the same slavery that they keep saying is the worst ever. But we got food vendors in my city. Who the they just took care of, but they they sell food mm-hmm. and then they take their profits and give it right back to the cartels yep. because the cartels help them get across the border. Exactly, they're, the, they're slaves. The cartels are going to schools and getting teachers and threatening teachers for the kid in order for the pay. Yeah. There's literally I saw an article where a teacher has put together a GoFundMe to help the kid pay back her co- the coyote. Oh wow! So this is slavery of what we're seeing right now. It's assassination and murder for of innocence. Mm-hmm. These things. That's what it is. Call it for what it is. Agreed. Stop being sensitive to their wording of it because ultimately this is the Christians that are on the fence or the Democratic Christians. They are using godless terms to describe 
God and his people and his creations. So if you fall into their godless terms for what God has created, you're doing you're, you're, you're moving just as they are. So get yourself out of that space. Get back into the word. Ask yourself, what does God want for me here? Does God agree with this position here? Because to end yeah. life, God is creator of life. Yeah. So does God want us to go out and end life? To go out and take our own? No. Yeah. So let's look at this stuff and go, how do we how do we parse that into where we say we stick? And I think there's a lot of people that are gonna have to, I mean, we call it our come to Jesus moment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're gonna have to face it. And the other side I would say, last point I'll say you're, on this. You're gonna face it. You're gonna face it. The choice is are you gonna face it while you're living? Or after. Or after. Well, and remember, because for me, and I'll share it with you guys, and I've shared this before, I've had, knowingly, I've had two abortions. Or my, uh, these women I was, I was with. I was going to say, I didn't know you can get pregnant, bro. Yeah, well, you know, well, nowadays. Men can. No. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was told. <laughs> he was told. Yeah. And so I had two, and it was something that in my when I began my walk with Jesus, I w- it would just... Every time mm-hmm. it was mentioned in, in church or when I talked to somebody, it break me down, mm-hmm. right? Because one of the kids could be a 20-year-old kid right now, 21. Wow. Mm-hmm. But the beauty of it, and Pastor Rob said this to me while we were uh, we were in a car talking about this. He goes, you've been redeemed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You've been redeemed, and now I'm about to have my first child. Mm-hmm. So for all those out there who think you think you did something so bad that no one will ever love you, it isn't true. Yeah, It's a lie by the enemy. Jesus knows we're following. Our best, our best deeds are like filthy rags to him. So what is your worst deed to him? Why can't he still love mm, you? Wow. Don't believe in that lie. I've seen him save my life multiple times, even though I condone the murder of innocent. My own kid. So trust in him. Because he and his love and his forgiveness and his gifts are more than you can ever try to imagine. And it's okay. Okay. Amen. John MacArthur said that God treated Jesus on the cross as if he lived my life. Yeah. Lived to live your life. Yeah. And that's very humbling because then you're like, well, I haven't done this, but he still treated him as if he, I lived, he lived my life. Yeah. And what you said, the best of me is filthy rags compared to God. And now because I put my faith in Christ, right. he turns around and treats me as if I live Jesus' yeah, life. No, like What a deal. Who, like, what? That doesn't make any sense. That's why it's called grace. Exactly. <laughs> you know, because we don't deserve it. And, and, you know, it's something that I struggle with. And I keep trying to work on, especially in this passionate time. Yeah. You know? um, but we just go and back the, to him. And the, and the grace is the reason that we can show mercy. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I think when we were sitting down, I think that's a word for you with what your captors and all these people are doing. Jesus says that in Luke six, he says, your heavenly father is kind to ungrateful and evil men. I know. <laughs> so be merciful as your heavenly father is merciful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a, yeah. And that's, the, that's the part that gets hard, you know, and if your enemy's hungry, yeah. right. They're not saying let go of justice. Yes. Right. Right. There needs to be justice. But in the way that we pray for those who persecute us, yep. in the way that we bless those who talk bad about us. And it says, if your enemy's hungry, give him food to eat. If he's thirsty, give him water to drink. Why? Because in doing so, you will reap a burning coals on his head. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, yep. I get it. Like mm-hmm. He's supposed to be this, but now he's treating me like this. Yeah. And that's the same way that Jesus treated people. Yeah. Oh, and for you also... The woman who was caught in adultery. Where the well. Yeah. yeah. He was without sin, cast the first stone. Where are those that sin? No one, no one, Lord. I don't condemn you. Go and sin no more. And that's what Paul says. If you're in Christ, there is no condemnation. Yes. Mm-hmm. Absolutely none. He loves us so much. Yeah. He loves us so much, guys. It's... <sighs> Siaka, it's been a pleasure yeah. having you yes, on. Yes, it is. Thank and you. We're gonna, I'm going to be sending this to a lot of people. <laughs> be, and Because it's not just January 6th. Right. It's not just Siaka the actor. It's not just, hey, I came out from alcoholism. It's redemption. Yeah. It's this is what Jesus does when someone says yes, yes. to him. Yeah. Simple. Right. Simple. And, 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 look, and this is what Jesus can do in your life if you say yes to him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's a... It, it, and it, it's a beautiful thing because it's a relationship. It's a relationship you can have for the rest of your life. You're always going to be sinning. You're always going to be stumbling. But 
the beautiful thing now compared to when you're on your own is that you have someone to catch you who loves you. Yeah. Loves you. Yep. Thank you guys. Amen. Brother, thank you so much, bro. Love you, man. Yeah. Too, brother. Love you. God bless you. you. Yes. Appreciate it. God bless you. Hey, before we end, um, where can they find you? Where can they support you? (laughs) Yeah. So, yes, uh, here on Instagram, you can find me uh, at, or not here on Instagram. We'll tag all your links. But yeah, Uh, We have at uh, underscore, or at Siaka underscore Massaqua. Um, uh, On X, it's underscore Siaka Massaqua. And if you like to, if you feel in your heart to help support in our uh, defense, I, I pled not guilty and we're going to fight this thing all the way to Good. the end. Um, you can go to defend Siaka, S I A K A dot com. And uh, yeah, whatever you yeah, feel we'll, like, you can even give prayers, which man, even better. it's been amazing. Yeah. We'll put all the links in the description below. So you just click that, it'll take you right to it. Mm-hmm. But yeah. All right. Ready? I'm ready. See you guys. Bye bye. Woof. <laughs>